Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us. Yet another week, we're back. This is actually the last 45, which I can't believe it's here, but we've got another week before uh, our full holiday season here. Um, so this is our last one. Uh, very excited to um, kind of get to this point because I'm kind of over this year, as I'm sure so many of you are. Uh, but I also wanted to end the year um, thinking forward. And so today we're talking about personal branding, but Actually, I nerded it up because so Roger's not is going to talk about the more exciting stuff. I, of course, had to make it very nerdy in marketing. And I thought about his journey, his travels, which we'll share in a little bit. But I thought about what could what could we all connect with and this idea of personal branding. We all have a personal brand um, and it's basically how people perceive us. It's also utilizing our experiences, our social channels, our network, our, our, our influence in order to move our careers, business projects forward. So we all have a personal brand. And I do believe with COVID, although there's been negatives and positives, one of the highlights has been this uh, greater connectivity uh, because we're all using video conferencing tools. Before COVID, some of us were, were already doing Zoom a ton and using it for so many different things. Now, my mom is on Zoom. So that's already just that, just that step alone. That's that's scary by itself. <laughs> and now she's already ready to teach a Zoom class. <laughs> My fear is that I'm going to turn into her. And Baylor knows what I'm talking about too. The fear is that you don't want to turn into your parents, but I feel like I'm already turning into her right now. <laughs> an expert within two days of doing something. Yes. <laughs> but today we're going to talk about personal branding next level. I call it 3.0 because now with this greater connectivity and the you everybody's using video conferencing tools that we now have the ability to build uh, a bigger brand and we have the ability to expand our network that we are no longer confined by our zip code um by where we live that there's nothing kind of stopping you from expanding your network and so today is just kind of getting you to think a little bit bigger um as we kind of end the year um, and you can expand your brand and expand your network literally from where you're seated right now. So, and I think that's really exciting and trying to find a silver lining out of all the craziness this had this year. And so I thought who would be a great person to talk about this topic of, um, you know, using uh, the world, if, if so to speak, and, and building a network around uh, travels and people around the world than, than uh, my friend Roger Bissell, who is an entrepreneur, self-made, but also has been in the hospitality, food and wine industry for, um, well, I won't give his, his the total years, <laughs> but he's been doing it for a while. He's definitely, um, I think many call, and I definitely refer to him as a thought leader in the space. But what's been exciting was that he has, um, he's used all of that, those years of experience to kind of create and forge his own path, to not follow the same traditional path that maybe his career started out to be. And he's got a new project that's going to be starting next year that um, kind of was um, influenced by this, this journey that he's had this past summer. No one else has been able to travel out of the country except Roger Bissell. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, he's been in Italy this year. So, and I've gotten to hear about these travels and see it while I'm sitting here uh, in, in the comforts of my laptop. <laughs> but he was there for a purpose. Uh, so I definitely want to get into that. So Roger Bissell, welcome to the 45. Well, good morning, and thank you for that introduction, Jasmine. You're too kind, and uh, <laughs> it's okay. You were there with me. Okay, great, great. So we always start off with a little toast. If you want to bring your cup up, actually. can I get my coffee cup? If you give me five seconds. <laughs> okay, we'll 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 wait for the toast. He's gonna go okay, get an right. espresso. <laughs> but in the meantime, um, one a little bit about me. My name is Jasmine. I feel like I always feel like I know everyone, but I know I, this is broadcasting on Facebook right now. And so if we have not met, my name is Jasmine. I am an entrepreneur based in Dallas, Texas, very passionate about connecting the community and started the 45 a couple months ago because I just was feeling very scattered and, and kind of separate from people. And I started talking to other people and they were also saying, you know, we, we were, we're needing some some structure or some conversation. So we just started hosting these chats every Friday. They're always 45 minutes long, very informal. Um, there is a video after, uh, so if you don't get to tune in live or miss some of this, that it's it's on YouTube. So, and hopefully next year, my goal is to just turn all these conversations we've had this year into a podcast. So for those that don't like to get up early or not morning people like me, <laughs> but still want to listen and connect with the amazing mm -hmm. guests we've had to join us, um, they'll, they'll all be available for you next month. So Roger, are you ready for your toast? I, I am. I've got a, a 
actually a coffee cup full of espresso, not this. So it's, I'm going to be one. Uh oh, so, okay, so we can start counting down to the craziness that's going to ensue then, huh? <laughs> okay, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about um, who you are, what you do, yeah. and then what are you currently obsessed with or watching? I do preface this every week because there's no shame in my game that I do watch Real Housewives of New York. I, I okay. This is the thing that I'm obsessed with. I don't, and I watch crime shows. I, I have a okay. weird obsession with crime shows as well. So what are you watching? And tell us a little about um, who you are and what you've been doing. Sure. Um, I'm going to back into it. We're going to, can I, I'm just going to start with what I've been watching. I actually okay. don't, I don't watch TV. I don't I, either. I watch it all on my phone. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't. No watch. movies, no Netflix. Occasionally, I'll get hooked on a series. Okay. And it's done. So the last one I watched was yeah. was called Gomorra, uh, and it's ab absolutely amazing series. But you have to like subtitles, uh, and it's it's an Italian series. You get sucked in and feel like you're the main character, and you feel like you're a dark, nefarious drug dealer in Napoli, Italy. So okay. that's what I like to watch. I like okay. to live vicariously through Ciro. So, <laughs> and it's, is it on Netflix? It's on Netflix, the first two seasons. They're currently filming season five. It's a hit. If you know, if you've watched Fargo in America, the oh, Fargo series, yeah. Salvatore Esposito, he is a recent appearance. He's the Italian guy, the big kind of muscle guy on it. Mm -hmm. He's one of the co-stars of Gamora. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's actually a really great series. You should watch it. I will watch that after my the Jeffrey Dahmer. And the filmography, okay. the cinematography is absolutely in the uh, the script. It's it's perfect. It's written like each uh, episode is written like an actual movie. Okay, so, I I will add that to the Jeffrey Dahmer biopic. That some was on my list. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that dark. It no, tells I know, I do, but I watched I watched those weird. Like I'll watch Real Housewives of New York, and then I'll watch one of those weird. Yeah, I have an obsession yeah. with that stuff. So. I'm just going to mix it in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so my background, I kind of have an interesting story, and I'll give you the quick version. Um, I was born in Italy, and I, uh, my parents died when I was uh, quite young, before the age of 10. Uh, I, I was in an orphanage, a Catholic orphanage, and I got adopted by a family in America uh, at a young age and grew up in New England on a farm. Uh, and from that farm, it just reinstilled my passion for local self-sustainability and really a very romantic, a bucolic kind of life. It was, it was a very interesting lifestyle. And uh, from there, I, 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 you know, I went to school. I grew up much like anyone else and went to school and decided to go into finance because that's what everyone pushes you to do. But I realized my heart wasn't in it. I was in Chicago. And while I made great money, it wasn't my life's calling at all. Uh, and I decided during that time period, I, me and a few business partners had bought a restaurant. And I had always worked in restaurants through college as a teenager. I went back to what made me feel good. And that is bringing joy into the life of others through that. So that's been an interesting journey after spending eight or nine years in finance uh, and to realize your life's purpose. And from there, I, I owned a Michelin and consulted Michelin restaurants, private clubs, resorts. I became uh, a master sommelier uh, along the way uh, and many other kind of cool accomplishments. But uh, for me, right now, what I'm working on and I've been working on the past year and a half is to inspire others to want to uh, broaden their horizons and travel through culture, food, and wine. So uh, I launched a show last year called Unwind Live, kind of introducing you to some of the amazing network of people that have blessed me in my life, but also have shaped me in some way. But some really cool people, chefs, artists, winery owners, all around the world, uh, just trendsetters. But looking forward to next year, uh, next month, I've got a- Before you really go there though, let's, let's slow down before you go there. 
Okay, all right. Because we got we have a little bit of time. I want to ask you though, because we I want to definitely get into what you're what's happening next. But so this idea, because you kind of this this starting from Italy and then being adopted and coming here and then yeah. finance. I mean, you've had quite a, a, a diverse life. And this idea of personal branding is is this theory that I've always said that who you are is the business you create. How have the 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 things that have happened in your life affected your career? And I ask that because when we start talking about crafting a personal brand, sometimes people feel like they've got to put the glossy uh, phase of their life. They don't really they don't want to actually embrace the baggage. And we all have baggage. We all have either a crazy uncle or some kind of weird situation. Like everybody's got something in their life that they may not be proud of or that was challenging for them. Um, but mm -hmm. that's actually the good stuff that makes a really amazing brand. And as we talk about trying yeah. to expand our network globally and outside of where we are, can you talk about how did the challenges impact what you do? So yeah. you know, being inspired to help others seems like that might have been connection to maybe right. you having some difficulties. Yeah. So, I mean, that could, whoo. That's a long one. Can, do you have a couch I can sit on? Well, you Nicole already has, she was thinking about pouring, we were thinking about pouring whiskey or something instead of coffee this morning. We should have just done that, I'm thinking. Uh, let me go grab the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> or bourbon, uh, sorry, Nicole. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> bourbon too, I'll grab the bourbon. So like I said, uh, you know, I, I came from a family, my parents had died young. It was a, it wasn't a great, uh, family I came from, you know, uh, my, I have several siblings, I have two brothers and a sister, and, you know, my mother was addicted to drugs, uh, and, uh, you know, that, that was a challenging childhood, um, you know, she did some nefarious activities on the street, uh, so it was kind of a good thing to be adopted, but maybe not shown as much love as a child, but I had the farm, the woods, the escape of all of the uh, the fruit trees, uh, you know, it very, I could escape, you know, the her terrible home life and go out into the woods. But from a personal perspective, I think all of that adversity actually helped shape me and give me the fortitude and the strength to always want to be better, to learn, to, to, to want to grow outside my world. I always dreamt of a bigger world than that farm in Rhode Island or the tiny town in Barolo, Piemonte and to do better than, uh, you know, my mother, my family. And then in terms of, so that always constantly pushed me. And then a, a year and a half ago, I had a, another new challenge that is really what shaped uh, what I'm doing now in the launch of the new platform, which we'll talk about later. But uh, so I was diagnosed with leukemia a year and a half ago. And, you know, I went through a huge, um, battle, um, uh, you know, a fight I, through chemo, uh, you name it. Um, and it, you know, it wasn't working. And then COVID hit. So COVID hit. And, you know, my only donor, which was my last opportunity, because the chemo I'd been going through for a year just wasn't uh, helping. My brother uh, was my donor, and he contracted COVID. <laughs> so, uh, no longer eligible as a donor, I opted to do a new medical procedure uh, that's available in a few other countries in the world, but uh, it's stem cell treatments. And I went to Milan, Italy, uh, right after COVID hit. And I decided that during this opportunity, I was going to take this opportunity to get healthy, to heal. So this was the my... summer, right, Roger? So when did you yep. go? Uh, I went back at the very first of June. And I just get, got back a few weeks ago. So uh, I went to Milan and then in between treatments, I used the opportunity to uh, visit old friends, establish new relationships uh, through Italy with amazing chefs, wineries, and really was blessed in people accepting an open arms uh, as a result of uh, a career spent in hospitality, you know? so. It was really a, a, a moment where I think challenges and adversity only make you better and open new do doors. I know it always seems that it's the darkest right before dawn. That's, that's the truth of life, that everything seems like it, it can't get any worse, but I promise you another door is going to open 
and other opportunities will present itself. And th that's what happened in, in, in my case. And I How are really, you feeling today? I, you know, I'm feeling great. I look, I look great, right? Feeling yeah, great. Definitely. Yeah, I just got, just got clean blood work back yesterday. So oh, that's psyched awesome. about it. Yeah, that's great. two in a month. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, I think that's interesting too, to your point exactly that, you know, out of this year, which has been so challenging, what I, what the common thing I've heard from a lot of people is like, it wasn't just one thing with COVID there. It, it seems like it's just been back to back, you know, with me, right. everyone knows I've talked about me losing my best friend, which is my dog Raisin at the start of the year. And then I lost a really close family friend. And then I've seen so many fellow business owners just have the a horrible, horrible time yeah friends just it just seems like it's never ending but what's been interesting is even today we still are trying to to find some sort of silver lining and i think i always try to look at the positives because i've i've been mm -hmm. at very lows and been been had highs and lows and said okay what could we what can we glean from this year that we can kind of take moving forward and i think it's this this kind of resurgence of this idea of where your purpose is now we talk about oh live your purpose blah 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 but most people in my experiences i don't know if this is for you especially coming from the restaurant industry which has been hit i mean it's something that keeps me decimated. up at night yeah decimated it's something that really bothers me especially i have a lot of friends in new york too and i was just talking to them we had a conversation recently just thinking about those restaurant owners there it's just it's it's a lot but there is this read of this definition of looking at purpose in a different way so a lot of people are doing things that they really are not purpose driven for and are not passionate for and for you you know how, how, how as you look forward to 21 and maybe you can tell us about your new project too. How did you take all these different challenges and kind of look at your purpose? You said you were in finance, you made a lot of money, very successful yet that didn't feel correct. And so you became a master Psalm and got into food and wine on restaurants. And now you're kind of evolving. How did COVID or how did this year kind of get you, uh, evolve your purpose? Well, <clears throat> uh, maybe in our industry it's a little bit different than others ours was self-imposed by the government <laughs> in in many cases so it and i i think you know that was unfortunate but if you look at it across all industries if you look at the restaurant industry they have adapted and and, and modified with the times better than i shouldn't say better but i, with I would the best agree with you i would i mean I, in the span of time of some of them teaching themselves how to go online and code, <laughs> build websites, right. create meal kits, like some of them become Tents. markers. It's been amazing. Uh, and then from an opera, and then all the entire time thinking from an operational perspective, moving facilities, get creative with spaces, get creative with uh, dining. I mean, really, and, and like that on the fly, like immediately talk about shifting a business model consistently. And when you look around the world, so, and, and, and it's very state specific, is mo are most of the people tuning in from Texas? No, all over. Okay. So I'll pull up England, for example, you know, Gordon Ramsay. Right now, Gordon is, he's had to open and close like eight times. That, that <laughs> what kind of business model Let's think about that in another manner. What if as a dentist, a doctor, a surgeon, they said, okay, you can run your practice. And then three weeks later, eh, no, sorry, you got to close. Can't run it. I know you were launching a marketing campaign and you had shifted your model and you rehired people. No, sorry, got to close. Oh, and the money we gave you? Yeah, uh, you only get that if you keep people employed for X amount of time. Sorry, no. Nope. And, but to do that eight times, it would basically be better just to not do anything, but they've adapted, they've survived. I've always thought that it's, I don't wanna say like a Darwinism kind of thing, but I truly believe that adversity and competition uh, inspires people and, and really brings out the best. You get some of the best inventions, creations, and out of people in times of absolute despair sometimes so or it, it challenges so for me uh it was a little bit forced like i said but at the same time uh, i had started to look ahead to the future that i wanted to go 
more global and connect with, because my network is so huge across the world and people are always asking, do this, do that. How did you get a big network though, Roger? Like, you know, how did you have, is it just from working in the different industries or because you, you've got the Italian connection? Like, how did you get such a big global network? Well, uh, I've always been uh, maybe a big personality. And I I mean, like a diva, does that, was that what that means? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, I've always really enjoyed lighting up the life of others. So when I go in a room, I, I make it a point to really get to know everyone in the room. And over the years, also getting to know other people has created a, a person that's a little bit nomadic. I, I need to be, I need to find a new challenge at every point in my life. So I've made it a point to always travel, come hell or high water to travel. Because when you travel, I think you make great friendships when you really travel. I, I don't mean going to Bangkok, Thailand and sitting at the, the Peninsula Hotel and eating American food. I mean, like really getting oh, out with the people okay. and getting really inundated with the fabric, the locals, the, the, you know, the authenticity of life to where you go. And along the way, find ways to help them uh, and connect with them. And maybe sometimes for the future, many times over my life, I'm even drawing on connections now and, and, and reconnecting and collaborating with people I met during a finance career that now we're finding a way to work together again. And it's, it's, really, it's, it's really inspiring when you can hold friendships and, and, and really create things for others and for yourself in that way, because that's what life is about. It's about inspiring and helping each other to build something uh, bigger than just you. What about at the end of your you don't feel like you want to inspire people? You know, one of the things this year is some people, it's just hard to even just log into Zoom, honestly speaking, or just to, to put, to brush your hair <laughs> or to yeah. actually show up. Like this has been a hard year. So ideally, yes, we should be inspiring each other and we should be brushing our hair and we should be showing up to stuff, but that's not happened this whole year. So like, how do we, how do you get this natural inspiration? Do, do you have days when you're not wanting to inspire people and you want to just tell people... <laughs> No, today? Um, well, you know, I, I'm a bit different. I, I hide myself from the world. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's the key. Yeah. I do too as well. So I, I trust me, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but those days are few and far between. I, I act, actually, many people uh, have asked me, Roger, you can't possibly be this happy all the time. What, what's, what's your secret? No way. It, it's not possible. No, it's possible. Have you ever noticed that when you feel happy or you have a happy thought or you smile at something, let's say when you're looking at someone else and they're texting on their phone and you see them smiling, you know that like it, it's, they're just texting, but something lit up their life through the text and it radiates to the rest of their body. And that creates this rush of endorphins. It's a chemical reaction in the brain uh, and, and, and it's contagious. People want to be around other people that are positive. People want to know, hey, what's the secret? Why is he smiling? I need to be around this. And and, and it attracts business too. If you're in business, if you're happy, you're positive, people want to know. They they want to know. It infects others in a great way, you know? So, So, So then I just need to be around other, I need to be around happy people. Yeah, or get an animal. They're always happy. For the most part. Uh, okay, you know about Cash. Some of you guys have already met Cash here on the 45. He's a diva and very moody, but we'll keep working on it, Roger. We'll keep <laughs> working on it. So we talk about travel because you said one of the things you said about building this network, and as we talk about one of the elements of a strong personal brand is your network. And a lot of us stay sure. very insulated with the people we know and don't think outward. I know I'm an introvert and sometimes networking. Now I've had to just from the business I've been in, I'm always constantly meeting people. But even at networking mm-hmm. events, it's still very stressful for me. That was when we had networking events. And you mentioned something about travel, and being nomadic, and, and, and travel has been the way that you've built this network and had all these business mm-hmm. opportunities. Here in the States, we are still limited. Now, I know we are hope, hope that in the next couple of months, things will start to change. But how can we still um, you know, build our network and expand when we can't travel? And can you also share maybe your thoughts? Uh, I don't want to say predictions 
since this is recorded, but you, you've been in travel for so long. Um, maybe what you think 21 will bring us as far as being able to get to Italy or, or Bangkok or wherever. Sure. Uh, so I think in terms of continuing to find inspiration and connect with others during this time, it's possible. Uh, I, if you read books, you get online into certain forums, you start reading, there's natural conversations that are taking place that have gone um, you know, offline to online because of that lack of connection. So I know I've joined a lot of new groups this year to bounce ideas off of within, let's say the food and beverage space, the travel space. So the groups are there, you just need to seek them out. Okay, there's places to still connect with people. Um, I know, yes, Zoom does get tiring from time to time, but sometimes maybe it's just a little chat and you can, and then you exchange information and you can go from there. Another great thing uh, that I found that works for me is I go back to business cards or uh, an app that stores the cards and you go back and just pick up the phone and reach out to someone that you never reached out to before, that you got a card, you remember what happened at a particular event. One of the most important things is, is remember something about someone else, okay? The sweetest sound in any particular language that one person wants to hear is the sound of their own name and to talk about themselves. So make it a point, I try to make it a point, make it a point at least once a week to you know, pick up the phone, uh, go through a business, I don't care if it's business cards, whatever it is, Reach out. I don't and... know if millennials have business cards anymore, Roger. Okay. But... All right. It's an app then. They have it on an app. Okay. But, and reach out to someone that you never reach out. You picked up their card at a networking event. You met them at a dinner, a, a bar, the supermarket, whatever. Reach out to them and say, hey, how are you doing during this time? Tell me a little bit what's going on. And then if you remember one thing about them, hey, yeah, you told me your wife was uh, attending Harvard. What, what's going on with that now? That will do wonders and probably create five new friendships and connections just by reaching out to one person. And it's not just that, it's the positivity that you create in that person's life. Because they say, how did he remember me? How did she remember me? Oh my gosh, that's so touching. You just probably shot with that one phone call or email, you shot to the top of his list of people that he or she is gonna help and wanna collaborate with because you did an act of kindness. I would so, agree with you. And I'd say like, go to where you are. So because we've got, I'm looking at the list, different ages and in different industries that if you have uh, followers that you have, that have been following you for a long time and they've just been following you, they've been posting cool comments. Have you actually posted comments back to them? Have you actually gone through your list to see who's been engaged? I think that's a great strategy, Roger, thank you. Yeah personal branding 3.0. These are very basic things, but because the life has been so crazy and we get so focused on our own stuff, it's like someone coming to a party and they've been talking about themselves for 30 minutes, right? Like, I mean, yeah. you see that person. So, but actually coming to a party and saying, go around and say, I'm going to meet three people. We can't do that in person, but it's the exact same thing that you can kind of translate that to, whether it's phone calls. Now, I'm not a huge phone person and people who are watching this that are friends with me will actually be like, Jasmine, you better not lie and say you're calling people on the phone because I'm a horrible, horrible phone person, but I'm a prolific email. I can do an email out. I can do that. DMs, not so much. So I think wherever you are, whatever your sweet space, if you're someone that can go through those DMs real quick, it's just, I think yeah. Roger's point is this re-engaging your connections. If that's the, if that's the point you're making Roger, right? Yeah. And, but you have to remember when you meet people, be really good about active listening. Okay. Ooh. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Mm -hmm. So we should be listening more than like we're Baylor, I'm gonna And Baylor, I'm going to uh, call on, you know, your thoughts on active listening, because I feel like not to make it a gender situation, but in my conversations with men and, and um, networking events, I don't know if they always are listening to me. Your thoughts? <laughs> we're listening, but we just, um, we listen, yeah, but a lot of times we know what the end result, that's me, I go into the conversation, know what the end result is going to be. So you're listening, um, but you're strategizing at the same time. So uh, okay. I've learned I've learned to listen more because I realize the more I listen to you, the more I can um, actually get to where I'm trying to go to the situation because I can use what you're telling me or what you're feeding me or what you feel, you see, you think. It's like putting it in my little 
script or things to give you the perfect uh, answer or situation or phrase to get to the result that I want. See, and that's what I mean. Like that's for for him. Like we, we meeting where you are, right? Not trying to be anything outside of yourself. Now, Roger, Brianne says that she has a full box of cards. <laughs> I know, I saw. It. And, and she's, she's only reached out to half. And she's definitely younger. So I'm I'm impressed for you that you have those business cards. But yeah, I think exactly you have a follow up. So this is a perfect time, right? Especially if you have any time off. This is a fantastic time to re-engage. I love that strategy. And I, Nicole, I agree with you too. Um, Emails and Zoom coffee chats, and the best advice that she's received is to be interested. To be interesting is to be interested, which I really love that, right? So yeah. let's talk about, Roger, you mentioned about finding groups and, and places to chat with people as we expand our network, but I feel like you're kind of already building something like this, right, for 21. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about your project that you're working on or kind of next level for you? Sure. So the, the project uh, I'm working on uh, currently, which is going to be launching next month, <clears throat> is going to be called Eat, Drink, Explore. Three simple words, but that contain life at your fingertips, uh, that contain a, a new life reimagined and, and maybe what life should really be like. So everyone across the world can connect with it someone else. They might not speak their language, uh, but they can connect through food, wine, drink, music, art, and culture. It's the universal language across every single person in the world. So I have a new platform, which is dedicated. It's, it's kind of an educational platform, but about connecting people and bringing them together and bringing people of different backgrounds together and shedding and showing a light on people from all across the world. So that's launching on January 7th so that we've got a roster of amazing people from all around the world that we're gonna have an opportunity to meet. Classes, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, educational videos. Uh, there's some really amazing things happening. Well, I'm excited about that. And I think to your point exactly, like we've got more commonalities than, and, than we have differences. And mm -hmm. there are lots of things out there, Zoom meetings, uh, there's lives happening. There's a lot of noise happening when it comes to stuff happening online. So I think I love the fact of this project that sounds like it's something that's gonna be a central location, if you will. And I, I personally like things that let me kind of, I like to say, get in where I fit in. Like, I don't like to have things that are very forced. So like, if I'm at two, if I'm someone who's up at two or 3 a.m., and that's when I feel my inspired to connect or, or learn about, you know, the Sistine Chapel, for example. That's right. not when I want to do it, as opposed to sometimes it's hard when there's lives and there's events and groups and you've got to do them at certain times. So I love the idea that this is something that could be accessible. Now, we have uh, about seven minutes or so. So I wanted to um, show one of the images because you were in Italy for most of this year while the rest of yeah. us were here. And literally, I think you told me too, like you were literally the only American. For, for a lot of cities you ran in Italy, right? Which had to be pretty crazy. Actually, you know, in seven months, I, I didn't meet uh, a single other American. Which is just crazy, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I know that Italy Italy has a special place in your heart and you, you are, um, I don't know, if it's not special. I actually master in Italian wines, expert in Italian wines, also Spanish wines. Um, yep. certified in olive oil, which I did not know you could get a certification in olive oil. <laughs> a master of olive oil? Yeah, master it just, of olive oil. You just, you just, you just get to go, through. what do you think keeps the skin looking so fast? Okay, <laughs> I don't know if this is possible, but this is one of your images. Uh, we'd love for you just to tell us a little bit about it um, and uh, maybe why sure. Italy is so special to you. And then also I am gonna go ahead and say predictions because it's uh, my coffee's kicking in. So give us your predictions for travel for the States for 21. <laughs> okay. Uh, that image, just a simple image. Uh, this is an article I published today. It's from the northernmost, one of the northernmost areas in Italy along the Swiss border. Uh, and it's called Valtalina. And it's a magical place about 30 to 45 minutes north of Lake Como. Nobody has ever heard of it outside of Italy, usually in Switzerland. And yet it has some of the best wines in the world and it is magic and food. 
has one of the oldest cheeses in the world. It's called Bito cheese. You can read more about this on my blog, but this is a magical place that everyone needs to go to and is full of fresh air, amazing, welcoming people. It's super affordable. These wines, best among the best in the world. Uh, and you can stop by Lake Como while you're there as well. And most of the people that go to Lake Como have never even heard of it. They're 30 minutes away from one of the finest wines regions and foods in the world and they, they don't even go there. So I, that's an example of getting inspired. Well, one I of the think other that's also what's interesting too is that along with us kind of re, like re-examining our um, purpose and what that looks like, also our definition of exploration. It's very easy for us to say, I want to go to Italy and go to Milan and Rome, which is fine, yeah. right? Like there's beautiful things to do in those cities. But as we start to think about our travel for next year, it's like, can we take our travel to the next level? Like when we go yeah. travel, when we finally can travel, we really, this is our chance to explore. And the fact that that region is 30 minutes from Lake Como, and I think this is all branding and marketing, by the way, and George Clooney. <laughs> helps Lake Como out big time. But yeah, like, that was fact, George. yeah, the fact that we don't know about this region uh, is amazing. Um, but that sounds like that's part of what you're doing with Idrahim. Yeah. So part of that too, and, and you know, with the travel tours, and that's another sector of Idrahim Explorer, I take people on tours, which I can't obviously do right now, but uh, it's in, inspiring people to go to places they normally wouldn't go. Okay. But that are amazing. Like factoid number one as a side, side note, you bring up Lake Como. Lake Como is the most popular lake to Americans, right? Because that's what they know because of George Clooney, Hollywood. That's not the most popular visited lake in, in, in Italy at all. 45 minutes away is the most popular visited lake in all of Europe. It's called Lago di Garda. And so it's interesting. It's, that's a, that's an, Perfect example of marketing 101, right? Uh, how, how you market something uh, determines that. Predictions for, uh, for 2021. Uh, we'll start with the travel, but first prediction is, is that uh, I'm excited to be working with Jasmine on this new project, which I didn't bring up and I should. Uh, Jasmine is absolutely amazing and is going to uh, add uh, another piece that really helps this project grow. So I'm really excited to be working with you, uh, you for this project for 2021, first and foremost. So thank you. You've inspired me a lot as well. So thank, thank you, Jasmine. You. Um, predictions for 2021 for travel. Well, there's ways to travel right now. Uh, and what they're proposing through Delta Airlines and several other airline companies is they're working out the details but where if you can present a COVID test and you get tested at the airport, they're setting up lines right now, it's a pilot program and it, they already rolled it out. They'll test you at the airport and if you pass, they'll let you get on the plane and then you have to do the same thing on the other side in Italy or in whatever other countries. Now you can still travel, but you need to budget like a month. You can still get to Europe right now if you're American, if you go to Romania first. Uh, Romania is letting Americans in. You have to stay two weeks and then you can continue on to Italy. So, so you can't just do a, a wild, crazy trip to, to Barcelona if you just, you, you can't do that right now. But which is interesting. So I think you're going to see from a prediction standpoint for the first eight or nine months of 2021, I think you're going to see people taking those that have the means, extended vacations in areas that they normally wouldn't travel to, to quarantine for a few days and do quarantine activities. Maybe if I was there, my prediction is, is that you're gonna see people traveling to places like Romania. Now they have to quarantine, but then you're gonna see in, in home or in apartment, in hotel, exploratory activities that like where people will come and drop stuff off for them that are indicative of the local culture. And for 14 days, they have a captive audience. I think you're gonna see businesses sprouting up and being made in this way. Then they'll continue on and they can go do whatever they wanna do in Italy or France, Spain. Now, with the vaccine being rolled out right now, uh, I think you, it, it's not gonna change and impact as much travel during the first six to nine months, even if everyone's getting the vaccine, because it's gonna take a while for everyone to be vaccinated, right? So 
I think that you're going to see record numbers in travel in the final quarter of 2021. That's what I think. Uh, but I think you're also going to see, uh, my prediction is you're going to see areas in popular countries that aren't normally visited traveled and then countries that normally aren't visited shoot much higher on the list because people so, want that yeah. event. So. so we, of course, this time always goes by so fast. We've, we've hit our, our, our time. It's 9 a.m. Central Standard Time here in Dallas. So we could, of course, keep having this conversation. I'm, I'm excited about this platform. I think it's really important right now. I also think now our conversations of doing something virtual, it's no longer the separation, right? Like this is just the new normal. And it, it doesn't mean we won't go back to hybrid or anything, you know, and go to in-person events. But now we're at a place now where we are truly, um, truly online, right? We're truly virtual, yeah. it's no longer in a virtual event. It's just going to be another event. So Roger, thanks so much for joining us. How do we stay connected with you on social? Sure. And how do we know, learn about um, each or sign up for it? Yeah. Uh, so follow me. You can follow me on my website and you'll see you can sign up for the pre-launch emails. Uh, there's some special things we're going to be rolling out. Uh, I've got a new artist coming on next month. You want to check that out. She's amazing. But you can on social, it's Roger underscore Bissell. Uh, on Facebook, it's Roger Bissell. But on my website, www.rogerbissell.co. And you'll get all the information for the Eat, Drink, Explore unveiling on January 7th. So awesome. well, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for having me. Yeah, thanks so much. And, and I want to thank all of you too, whether you're here in um, Zoom with us or you're on Facebook watching that this has been so amazing to have this to look forward to. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely um, helped this year kind of go by and it's amazing conversations we've had. I've been really blessed to have a lot of cool people on who are also friends. We are, of course, going to come back because as Jazz, as, you, as some of you know, Jasmine can't just have a hobby. <laughs> Can I say something real quick? Sure. I know we're at the end. Uh, I want to connect with all of you on here. Even okay. if you want to pick up the phone, shoot me an email, DM me. If you need some positivity in your life for the day, like just tap into my well, I'm there. <laughs> so seriously, I, I really want to hear from each and every single one of you. And I'm going to touch base with you when you least think about it. Uh -oh. I'm going to just pop in there. And uh, seriously, I would really enjoy getting to know some of you more. So awesome. we'll follow him, Roger Bissell on, it's Roger underscore Bissell on IG and on Facebook. And I hope you all have a fantastic holiday. I'm Jasmine No E Brand. If we've not already connected, um, I'll shoot an email out next week uh, with the link to all the video conversations we've had this year, which has been amazing. So have a wonderful holiday and a happy new year. And I look forward to seeing you <laughs> and ciao. connecting with you in 21. Thanks, guys. Ciao, alla prossima. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Bye. Bye.